We're literally getting 5 FPS right now. This is my laptop. An old HP ProBook 650 G1 that I managed to get on eBay for only $20. I'm on a mission to try and get this to run Minecraft the best it possibly can. In my last video, I optimized both the in-game settings, added a special FPS boosting mod pack, and even optimized all of my Windows settings to try and get Minecraft running the best it possibly could on this laptop. So in this video, it's time to take it to the next level. Now I'm trying to get the best performance I possibly can out of this pretty old hardware. And that right now is what we're lacking, hardware. Well, technically this is hardware, but we're trying to get the most power we possibly can out of this hardware, so it's time for an upgrade. To tackle this challenge head on, I've invested in a few upgrades for this laptop. The first is upgrading our measly 4GB of DDR3 RAM to 16GB, which I'm pretty sure is the maximum this will support. Well, it probably would support 32, but 16 is fine. I mean, come on, we're only playing Minecraft here. This will hopefully improve our multitasking capabilities, allow us to allocate more RAM to the game, and hopefully improve our gaming performance. The next one, and this is one that I recommend to anyone out there, whatever computer you've got, is get an SSD in your computer. It significantly improves load times, things are a lot more snappier, and it's just an essential on pretty much every computer now has got to have an SSD. Now fortunately, I didn't actually have to upgrade this to an SSD because it actually came with one. It came with a 128GB SSD, which yeah, granted it's quite a cheap one, it's not fastest, but it will do for this laptop for sure. If you've got a PC out there that's running really slow, adding an SSD will 99% of the time improve your performance, so it's a very recommended update. Now in my last video, I actually changed the thermal paste on our CPU, which is something that you should definitely do on a laptop because they run so hot, the thermal paste over time can get really crusty and it doesn't actually cool your CPU. Therefore, your CPU is more likely to throttle under pressure, which will significantly reduce your gaming performance. Now, luckily, getting to the CPU is quite easy in this laptop, but in other laptops out there, they can be a bit of a pain to get to and may require a full laptop teardown. Fortunately for us, I was able to simply locate the cooler, take the four screws off of it, take the fan out, take the cooler off, and there was our CPU in dire need for some new thermal paste. I then cleaned that off, added some Arctic MX4 thermal paste, and we were pretty much good to go. However, while I was in there, I discovered that you can actually upgrade the processor in this laptop, which is unheard of in the laptop world. Very few laptops out there can you actually remove the processor and upgrade it for a new one. So I decided to jump at the chance to actually put the best CPU I possibly could in this laptop. However, there are a few limitations when it comes to choosing a CPU for your laptop. It's not like just in a desktop PC where we can look up our motherboards and just drop whatever CPU we want in there. We've got to factor in two things with a laptop. One being cooling and the next being power. So the chipset in our case of this laptop is called Intel QM27, which means that it will support all of these processors you can see on your screen right now. However, remember what I said before about cooling and power? Well, this significantly limits our options on this laptop. Now, I had read various forums and stuff online about different processes working with it, but I also heard some horror stories where people had ordered CPUs, put them in the laptop, and it simply just refused to turn on, which I really didn't want to do. This video is delayed enough as it is, so I really wanted to get this right first time and order a CPU that I knew would 100% work on this laptop. So instead, I found a recommended list by HP and the best CPU on there was an Intel Core i7-4600M CPU. So I managed to find one for pretty cheap on eBay, got it ordered, and then it was time to install it. The upgrade was fairly easy to do. I started by updating my BIOS, which is always recommended. The last thing I want to do is drop in my new CPU into this laptop and then it just not work. Then I've got to take out the new CPU, put back in the old CPU and then do the BIOS update and then take out that and then it's just, it's just so much pain. Updating the BIOS on this laptop was very easy to do. All I needed to do was go on the HP website, find my laptop and just download the BIOS update. From there, it was a simple installer. The laptop then restarted a couple of times and then we were good to go. After that, it was time to remove the CPU cooler and there was our CPU, 
all looking nice and icy cold with the new thermal paste that we applied in my last video. Then all it took was a hex screw which loosened the CPU and I was able to lift it straight out. Now with these CPUs, they have actually got pins on the bottom, which is pretty unheard of for an Intel CPU. Normally AMD Ryzen CPUs have pins on the bottom and you've got to be very careful that you don't bend any of them, otherwise your CPU might not work. So I was very careful dropping in this CPU. I didn't want to apply any pressure onto it, otherwise that might potentially bend some of the pins. I wanted to make sure it was all lined up perfectly and it would just fall straight into place. So I had to go off camera and do that, but I got it in there. It was all pretty much good to go. Then I just screwed the heat sink and cooler back on, put the fan back into place, connected it all up, and it was finally time to test out the performance of our laptop. The moment of truth came, I pressed the power on button and it booted first time, which I was really relieved and happy about. The last thing I needed was to take the CPU out again, find out I'd ordered the wrong one, get another one in, it would have just been so much pain, but I managed to get it right first time, it booted up and straight away I could just feel how snappy the computer was compared to the last time I used it. But now it's time for the moment of truth, how well would this laptop now run Minecraft with both an upgraded CPU and upgraded RAM? Let's take a look. Here's the moment of truth. How will our $20 laptop run after we've done all of our upgrades? So we've currently got Feather Client 1.8.9 open. So let's go ahead and load up a Minecraft world and see what FPS we're currently on. All right, so here we are on the $20 laptop with our upgrades and we're getting an average of about 500 FPS in this single player world. Now, yeah, we have got Feather Climb, we've got Optifine. These are our video settings. We could probably bump the render distance up to about, I don't know, four short maybe. And that takes us to about 300 FPS, just over 300. I do prefer a slightly higher render distance just so I can see a bit more. But yeah, this is perfectly playable, honestly. The FPS is really good. We're not stuttering about. We don't have any lag spikes when we're loading in new chunks or anything. Yeah, I could definitely play like this, to be honest. It's really good, it's really smooth. I think our upgrades have actually made a massive difference here. And if we play in small window mode, the FPS difference isn't actually too much. So that's quite interesting. Now the CPU that we've upgraded it with is not a quad core. It is just a dual core. As you can see here, we've only got two cores for logical processors. So yeah, I was a little bit disappointed when I found out about that. It's pretty much just like a slightly better i3 that we had before. But yeah, the FPS difference is vastly improved. That combined with the RAM, I think, has done a really good job with this laptop. So the thing that everyone wants to know is how does this run 1.20.4, the latest version of Minecraft at the time of recording? Now, before we were a lagging, stuttery mess. One minute would be on like 300 FPS, next would be on like 30 or 10 when we're loading in new chunks and to be honest even with all of our fps boosting mods i'll just show you here look at all this stuff that we've got installed on feather client our fps is not very good as you just saw there we went down to about 20 fps loading in new chunks so it's a bit of a shame really we've got obviously sodium fabric we're running these video settings it just can't handle what five fps what are you doing? We're on like about 100 there when we were flying and we've just gone all the way down to that. And now we're rendering in more chunks. We're on like 30 FPS. Yeah, it's really, it's stuttering quite a lot. It's not very good. One thing someone suggested was that maybe I should cap my FPS. So we'll try that. Let's go ahead and turn on V-Sync and this should lock our FPS to 60. So this feels a lot smoother already, but how does it fare when we load in new chunks? Okay, so we just dropped just below 60 there. Okay, you know what? I think this may have fixed it. Capping our FPS to 60, therefore it doesn't fluctuate too much. It actually feels quite smooth. You could probably play like this if you wanted to. I mean, yeah, we want to get the maximum FPS possible out of this, but I think on the later versions, you just want stability and capping your FPS might be the best way to get Minecraft running smoothly on here. Now, running around on a single player world on Minecraft is not the best way to be testing FPS on this laptop and the difference these upgrades have made. So I have done some benchmarks on this thing. I essentially ran around in the exact same way in a 1.8.9 single player world. I did a combination of walking, flying, going into F5, looking up and down and seeing what FPS we can get. And I did the test before every single upgrade we've done to this laptop. So let's open up Cat Frame X and I'll show you. All right, so this is the first test that I did. So for a start, we used four gigabytes of RAM with the old Intel Core i3 4000M. I did 
did this benchmark and these are the results. So the maximum FPS we got was 622, but don't look at that. That is the absolute maximum FPS we got at a single split second. It's not really relevant. The main thing we're going to be looking at is the average FPS, which was 160.8 with 0.2 percentile and 0.1 percentile FPS at 36 and 29 respectively. So yeah, that is pretty much our average FPS there. Not great, but for a $20 laptop on its completely stock spec with no upgrades or anything added to it, not too bad after the optimizations we did in my last video. Next up, I threw in another 4GB stick into this laptop which took it up to 8GB of RAM and did the exact same benchmark and these are our results. So as you can see here our maximum FPS is 1059 but like I said before irrelevant but still pretty cool to see. Our average was 317.5 FPS and our 0.2 and 0.1 percentile was 85 and 66. So big improvement there. Now before you guys go asking in the comments every single test that I run had the same two gigabytes allocated to the game. So I'm guessing with eight gigabytes of RAM, it had more headroom. Therefore, the performance has greatly improved. So if you guys do have old laptops out there and you have the option to upgrade your RAM, I definitely do it because you can get pretty much double the performance in our case, according to these benchmarks. Then I took things even further and I put 16 gigabytes of RAM in this laptop. These are the results. So with 16 gigabytes of RAM, our maximum FPS was 1,433. Our average was 428 FPS. So compare that to before when we only had 8 gigabytes of RAM. That is another 100 FPS in the bag there just by doubling our RAM. And our 0.2 and 0.1 percentile FPS is over 100. Very consistent actually now. So yeah, this is really on a good path right now. The only thing we did after this was upgrade the processor to the i7-4600M. And these are the results. Maximum FPS. 2,655 FPS. Average FPS 522 after all the upgrades we've done to this laptop. And as you can see before in the gameplay, our FPS was very consistent at about 500 FPS. And our 0.2 and 0.1 percentile, 166 and 143. So yeah, big improvement going from 160 FPS with only 4 gigabytes of RAM and an i3 to 522 FPS with 16 gigabytes of RAM and an Intel Core i7 processor upgrade. So was it worth upgrading this $20 laptop? I would say, yeah, it was worth it. I mean, if you look at the performance before we did all of this upgrading and optimizing, and just went on this mission in the first place to try and upgrade and make this laptop the best it possibly could be. I think we've done very well. I've combined both my Windows knowledge and my somewhat hardware knowledge to try and take this laptop to be the best it possibly can. Now, it's a bit of a bummer that we can't add a graphics card in here like we could maybe with a PC. So we're kind of stuck now on integrated graphics. I believe we're probably on the best processor we could probably get. We could probably get a quad core in here, but it'd be a bit of a risk whether it would work or not, or whether one, the cooler would be able to handle it, and two, the power as well, because you're very limited with watts and powers and stuff on laptops. It's not like on a PC. Well, I suppose you kind of are, but you've got a lot more headroom on a PC than on a laptop. So yeah, upgrades and stuff like that isn't the best. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with what we've, we're winning 1v1s, aren't we? So we're doing all right in that sense. It's not too laggy. We have actually gone back on to 1.8.9 just because I don't really fancy playing in 60 and just dropping below 60. It's quite consistent high FPS on 1.8.9. So I'm pretty happy with the performance there. Now, there is just one more thing that I need to do to this laptop that I think would get even more performance out of this. And that would be to change the operating system entirely and going with Linux. So if you want to see a video on me trying out that, then definitely let me know in the comments. And that will probably be the third and final video on this laptop, installing Linux on here and seeing what kind of performance we get on there. I know Linux works very well with Intel integrated graphics, so it might be able to breathe new life into this laptop. And we might even be able to get even more performance out of this thing. But yeah, thank you guys all for watching. These videos take a very long time to make. Not only have I got to wait for the stuff to get shipped, me. I've also got to find time to upgrade this laptop and record it all. So yeah, that's why uploads have been a little bit slow recently, but I'm having a lot of fun doing videos like this. Let me know if you enjoyed them as well in the comments and let me know if you've learned anything from this series of videos on my channel. Next one, I'll probably install Linux and stuff on here and try and get this optimized even more. But yeah, that's pretty much as far as we're going to take it in this video. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.